Hi, I'm a Forrester here, and we're going to take a look at a very special handgun, a Colt 1903 Pocket Hammerless. It's chambered in 32 ACP. Now, everybody's heard of the 1911, but until just recently, I had never heard of the 1903. I was talking about my interest in handguns recently, and my wife's cousin mentioned a handgun that her grandfather had kept under his pillow while he slept. After seeing pictures of this Colt 1903, I decided to research it and find out as much as I could about this model. My wife's Uncle Early lives nearby, and he gave me the scoop on this gun's history and his family. His father was Ellison Nelson. He was a Columbia businessman. He was born in 1893 and lived 87 years. He died in 1980. As a boy, Early remembers seeing this gun under his dad's pillow in somewhere around the mid-1920s. He may have slept with this gun under his pillow for the bulk of his adult life, maybe as much as 40 to 50 years. Early's impression as a boy was that it was customary, or at least it wasn't unusual, for the man of the house to keep a gun under his pillow. There's at least two safety precautions worth mentioning if you ever find an old family gun. This may be the most important point in this whole video. First, assume the gun's loaded. Now I've left this gun in the same condition that it was found. The, main, uh, the chamber was empty, but there were five rounds of Peter's 32 ACP in the magazine. I imagine this is how Mr. Nelson actually slept with it under his pillow, without a round in the chamber, but nobody ever unloaded it. It could be deadly to play with an old gun that you assume isn't loaded. Let's go ahead and unload it. I think that was five. Let's check the magazine and see. Okay, now we're unloaded. The second point is to always make sure that you check the barrel to make sure there's no obstructions if you get the notion to see if it'll still fire. I'll do a disassembly of this gun later in the video and show you how to check the barrel. The Colt 1903 Pocket Hammerless had a unique role in history. It was designed by John Moses Browning prior to the 1911. The patent date is shown right here on the slide, and I'll try to get that in focus for you. But of course it says 1903. 570,000 of these little pistols were produced between 1903 and 1945. The Colt 1903 was carried by everybody from Al Capone to George Patton. It was issued to general officers during World War II, not only in the United States, but in other countries as well. Over 50,000 of these guns were shipped to Japan, Thailand, Java, and the Philippines. Japan's Prime Minister Tojo was directly responsible for the attack on Pearl Harbor. After Japan's surrender, he attempted suicide with his Colt 1903, but he was nursed back to health by Americans so that he could stand trial. In 1948, he was hanged. The Colt 1903 was also popular here in the United States among the criminal elements of society. It was the concealed carry gun of the 1920s and 1930s due to its small size. Here it is next to my Ruger SR 1911. And you can tell it's much smaller. In particular, it's much more narrow, which made it very easy to conceal inside a coat pocket. Everybody's familiar with the Ruger LCP, and this is in 380. But you might be surprised that both of these guns are approximately 7 tenths of an inch in diameter, but the Colt is just a hair slimmer than the Ruger LCP. And because of its weight, it really lacks the recoil that the LCP has. I've read accounts of Bonnie strapping this Colt 1903 to her thigh to break Clyde Barrows out of jail. It's also written that John Dillinger had this gun on him when he was shot outside the Biograph Theater in Chicago in 1934. There's an excellent video review of this and other gangster guns in a History Channel documentary called Tales of the Gun 
gangster guns, and you can Google that and easily find it. This particular Colt 1903 was manufactured in 1916. The serial number is stamped on the left-hand side of the slide, and it's serial number 209422. It was one of 42,000 of these handguns that were made that year. There's five variations of the Colt 1903, and this is an example of the Type 3 pistol. The most significant change in this version was the incorporation of a 1911 style barrel bushing into the barrel itself. I'll show that during the disassembly. There's an excellent website, coltautos.com, that will give you all the details on the changes over the life of this gun. The overall length of this gun is just over six and a half inches long and it weighs 24 ounces. The barrel's three and three-fourths inches long. That's one-fourth inch shorter than the original four-inch barrel. It has hardened rubber grips. The one on this side is in a little better condition. It says Colt at the top and then you have the Colt logo at the bottom. And it has fixed sights. It has a European style magazine release. And the magazine holds eight rounds of 32 ACP. It's engraved on the bottom with the words 30, uh, caliber 32 Colt. I found it interesting that the spelling of the word caliber on the right hand side of the slide is the British spelling of the word. There you go. The only thing I can assume is maybe that was the American spelling also at one time. This Colt 1903 disassembles like no other gun I've ever handled. The barrel is locked in place to the frame right about here by some interlocking grooves. To disassemble it, you press the slide back until an arrow that's located right here reaches the frame. Now, by the way, that arrow has a number of feathers. This version does not have any feathers on it, but the number of feathers aid in aging this gun. I'm going to try to disassemble and then reassemble the gun on camera without breaking uh, filming, just so you can see the difficulty in, in uh, disassembly and assembly of the gun. But first, we need to take the magazine out. Then we'll press the slide back until that arrow reaches the frame. And if we've done it right, we'll turn the barrel 90 degrees to the left. And then the slide and the barrel should come right off the gun. And leave the recoil spring and guide rod in the frame. We'll take that out and set it aside. Now here's the grooves that I was talking about in the gun. And this is where the, the matching grooves of the barrel lock in place. There's the inner workings of the pocket hammerless pistol. I'll set that aside. And I want to point one thing out about the recoil spring. You notice how bent it is. And that's because probably at some point in time, at least once, it was put together incorrectly without fully seating the uh, guide rod or the other end of the spring. So we'll try to do it right when we put this back together. Here's the slide. And this is, uh, I mentioned the barrel bushing was one of the changes in this Type 3 pistol. Here's the barrel, and this is how they incorporated the barrel bushing into the barrel itself. I hope you can pick up on that. Now to take the barrel out of the gun, you just turn it 90 degrees to the right, clockwise, and pull it straight out the slide. Here are the matching grooves on the barrel that mesh with the slide or with the frame. Now I talked about checking the barrel for obstructions. You always want to do this with an older gun. Don't assume that there aren't any obstructions. I've cleaned this barrel and I'll probably clean it again before I fire it. Now assembly is not nearly as easy as disassembly. So I'm going to do that now on camera. 
you put the barrel back in place and turn the grooves to where they're pointed up. And then you want to be sure and fully seat the guide rod back into the gun, into the frame. Start the uh, slide on the rails and then put the other end of the gun of the uh, spring, rec recoil spring into the front of the slide. Now we're going to press it forward and try to keep that recoil spring from crimping. And then we're going to press it back until that arrow reaches the frame and about half of the arrow head is covered up. It's hard to even see it. And if we've done it right, let's try it again. There. Now I'm not going to cut the film because I want to see how hard it is actually to get this back together. But there it is. We'll put the magazine back in and we're ready to go. But that's the Colt 1903 Pocket Hammerless 32 ACP. By the way, when I had the gun disassembled, did you notice that this hammerless gun, as it's called, does have a hammer? Go back and check out the video. It's called the hammerless because it's not an exposed hammer, and that was different for that, that time. Take care and stay tuned for a test firing of this pistol in a later video. I'll have some still shots of it also where you can get a better close-up look at the gun. Y'all take care.